Today we're installing the Madjax Ultimate Plus Light Kit designed for the Yamaha Drive. Included with the kit are your headlights, your harness, tail lights, the brake switch, a 12 to 48 volt converter, a USB charging station, your horn, a turn signal indicator with a relay harness, and your column cover. Before we begin, I want to remind you to set the cart into tow mode, turn the key switch off, and engage the parking brake. Now let's get started. Before we run our new light kit harness, I'm going to go over some of the connections for you. Up at the very front of the harness, you'll notice a three pin red and three pin white connector with female bullet connectors attached. These go to your headlights. Red goes to the passenger side. Right off of that, you'll notice a purple and black female spade connector. This goes to your horn. Down a little further, you'll notice a male 12-pin connector. This goes to your relay harness. Next, you'll notice a red, black, and blue wire. The blue wire will go to the purple wire on the relay harness. The black and red are not used. Then you'll see a fuse with a two-pin connector. This goes to your USB port harness and USB. Towards the center of the harness, you'll notice a red, black, and yellow wire. The red and yellow wires go to your brake switch. The black is not used. Next, you'll see a two-pin connection. This is for your battery hookups. And then finally, you'll see two more three-pin connections. One red, one white. This is for your tail lights. Passenger side has the red connector. First thing we're gonna do is remove the factory floor mat and retain all the push rivets and then remove and retain the brake access panel. Now we're gonna run our harness into our brake access starting with the tail light pins first. You're gonna follow the main cart harness through the hole here behind the accelerator. You're gonna pull the harness until the brake switch hookup connectors are in the brake access. Next we're gonna attach our relay harness to our 12 pin connector and then put the rest of these wires up to the front. Before we attach our relay harness, I want to go through the connections for you. You'll notice two 12-pin connectors on each side. The 12-pin connector that's over here by itself will go to the new light kit harness. The 12-pin on the opposite side will go to your indicator. You'll also notice you have a new hazard switch here. You'll also notice there's two female bullet connectors and a male bullet connector here. This is for the fog lights or LED light bars on the auxiliary switch for your indicator. And you'll also see a purple wire. This wire will attach to your new light kit harness. You're gonna plug in the long end of the relay harness to your new light harness. Now we're gonna push the front of the harness up into the dash cavity We'll come back to this later. Now we're gonna take our harness and feed it back in under the cart through the cavity here. Remember, we're gonna leave our brake switch hookups in the access. Now the reason we did this was to get the harness up over the front of the frame. Now we're gonna run it to our battery pack. Now we're gonna feed our harness over the middle part of the frame here in through the cavity. At this point, we can feed the back side of our harness into the engine compartment or your battery compartment. You should have your tail lights and your battery hookups. We're just gonna leave these aside for now. We'll come back later. Moving to the front of the cart, we're gonna cut out our headlights using the supplied template. On the driver's side, you're gonna place the template up here and follow the bottom of the body, as well as the curve here on the inside. Once you get the template lined up at these two positions, go ahead and tape your template off. Even if you have factory headlights, go ahead and remove them and tape on the template the same way. Now we're gonna use a marker and trace the inside of our template. Then we're gonna drill out a pilot hole. We're gonna remove our template and save it for the other side and use our cutting tool and trim out for our headlight. You have a factory headlight in place, you'll notice a few small areas along the template that you'll have to trim. Remember to use safety glasses. You wanna make sure when you're cutting out your hole 
to leave the line because you can always take a little more but you can't add to it. At this point you can take a piece of sandpaper and lightly clean up the edges and then we're going to test fit our headlight. You need to take a little more off of the top here. We're going to trim it just a little bit more. Now that your headlight fits we're going to go ahead and attach to the front harness. You're going to reach in and grab the three pin connector from your front harness and attach that to your headlight. Then you're going to take the red female bullet connector and attach that to the red bullet connector from your headlight and do the same thing with the gray female from the harness to the gray male of your headlight. The other two are not used. And then using the hardware supplied, you're going to secure your headlight to the cow. Now we're going to repeat these steps on the other side. We're going to connect our horn to our harness and then secure it with a self-tapping screw. You'll see the black and purple wire from our harness. It does not matter which connector goes to which terminal on the back side of the horn. And just find a good spot on the frame that's free of obstruction and secure it. Moving to the rear of the cart, we're going to cut out the template for our tail lights. With the supplied template, you'll notice that it says passenger side. We're going to flip this over for the driver side template. What you want to do here is follow the bottom side of the rear body and the curve. You're also going to want to come right here to the flat part of the rear body. Not the curve here, but right where it turns flat. We're going to tape off our template and then mark the inside. If you have factory tail lights, just hold the template up and see if you need to trim out any more. If not, you can skip this step and install your new tail light. We're going to drill a pilot hole for our cutting tool. Remember to use safety glasses. Now we're going to test fit our tail light. Then we're going to run our harness from the battery pack up to the back of the cart. You'll notice here that we're installing this on a gas cart. But if you have an electric cart with a battery pack, these steps are the exact same. You're going to feed your harness around the outside battery on the driver's side here. You're going to leave your battery converter hookup here at the back of the cart. You're going to take the white connector and feed that over the rear panel of the driver's side. Then you're going to run the passenger side red connector behind your motor or your battery pack across the back. We'll secure it later and then over the passenger side of the cart. Now we're going to pull our tail light harness over the rear tire well and attach our tail light. And finally we're going to secure the tail light to the rear body using the supplied hardware. We're going to repeat this process on the other side. Before we install the turn signal indicator, we want to go over some of the functions. You'll notice on the outside here, we have our horn button. Up and down on the lever works the turn signals. Here on the very outside, the first switch here turns on your daytime run lights. The second will turn on the daytime run lights plus your front headlights. If you pull the lever back towards you till it clicks, you now have high beams to turn those off. You just simply click it again. You also notice the inside ring here has two additional light settings. This feature is for fog lights or small light bars. This will help keep your dash panel clear of extra switches. Now we're going to attach the turn signal indicator to our steering column. What you're going to do is loosen up the four screws and take two of them out so that the straps can go around the column. I always like to test fit my harness to make sure it'll go down the column and into the front access panel. On this cart, we're going to drill a hole in the bottom side 
of the indicator panel here and feed our 12 pin in. So I'm gonna to come to about right here on our column and reinstall the screws to secure it. Make sure that you equally tighten all four screws. Once the indicator is attached, you're gonna secure the cover to the back side by snapping it in place. Now we're gonna take our column cover. You're gonna feed the harness into the channel on the back side of the cover here and then snap it over your column. Then we're gonna take the set screw out of the top of our cup holder and retain the screw, pop the cup holder out. Now we're gonna take a cutting tool and we're gonna cut a hole in the bottom side of our access panel here that's big enough to fit our 12 pin connector up through the bottom. We're gonna pull the 12 pin through the access and then reach into the front area and pull up our harness. At this point, this is all we should have left of our front harness. You'll have your 12 pin that goes to the 12 pin connector here. We'll go ahead and plug that in. Now we're gonna attach the purple wire from our turn signal harness to the blue wire of our main harness. At this point, if you're using any additional fog lights or front light bars, go ahead and attach it to your fog positions now. You'll see a green and white fog light and a second position fog light, which is a purple and white. What you'll do is you'll put each one of your light connections hot wires here and then put the negative for each one to this negative fog male bullet connector here. That'll again work off of the indicator. Next, we're gonna take the black, blue, and yellow wire off of the back of our hazard switch. Note that the black wire is behind the LED light on the switch. The blue is in the center and the yellow is on the top. This needs to go right back in the same way. We're gonna disconnect it temporarily from our switch. Then we're gonna take the nut off the back side of our switch. Then we're gonna use a 15, 30 seconds drill bit and drill a hole to mount our hazard switch. On this particular cart, we're gonna just put it right here below where the battery meter would go. Your cart may be different. Just make sure that where you're gonna drill at, there's no wires behind that can get cut with a drill bit. Remember to wear your safety glasses. Once your switch is in, go ahead and secure it with the nut. Now you can reattach your black, blue, and yellow. Remember, black on the bottom, blue on the center, yellow on the top. At this point, the only wires you should have left to connect is the black and red wire for your USB port. A Little bit further down from there, that's your additional accessory connection that you can use. So we're gonna go ahead and install our USB port on this particular drive cart. We're gonna put it into the cup holder and I'll show you that next. So you have two options here. Of course, you can put this wherever you want, but on this cart, we're gonna put it right dead in the middle of this little square panel inside the cup holder. You can use a one and one eight paddle bit, or you can do like we're gonna do, and unscrew the nut, place the nut where you want it, trace out the inside, and then cut it out. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it in and then secure it with the nut that we removed earlier. Then the last thing we're gonna do is attach our black and red to the terminals on the back side. The red will go to the positive symbol and the black to the negative. At this point, we can reattach our cup holder. Moving back into the brake access, you're gonna disengage the parking brake and chalk the wheels. Now we're gonna take the pin that holds the clevis to the pedal out and remove the pin. Now you're gonna replace this with the new pin. You'll notice that there's some white washers. These washers can be removed so that the pin fits better when it comes to the brake switch. You're gonna put it back in as shown with the washers on the passenger side. What you're looking for here is the hole to secure your pin. On this one, we can't see the pinhole, so we're gonna take this pin back out, take a washer or two off, and try again. 
Once you can see the pin hole, go ahead and place in the pin to keep it in place. Next, we're gonna take the switch bracket. What you wanna do here with the bracket is mount it in such a way that when the brake switch is mounted into the bracket, that your spring clips over the pin we put in and it's relatively straight. On this cart, we're gonna mount it right here to the brake pedal mount and install. If we were to put it this side, it's gonna hit. So what we're gonna do is just flip it around here. It'll have a slight angle, but as long as the plunger will pull out of the brake switch, we're good. Next, we're gonna feed the spring into the bracket. And then finally, our switch, you're gonna push it in past the prongs to where that it clicks into place, like so. You'll notice there's a threaded in here, that's for brake switch adjustment. You'll notice on the pin, there's a little channel, that's where your switch spring will sit. The hole that's pre-drilled for our mount is a little bit further back than our mounting spot. So we're gonna have to use a self-tapping screw to attach it. One thing you wanna make sure of is that you don't hit your brake switch when running the screw through. Another issue here that you could run into is that the plunger will be engaged if you pull too far back. So you want the spring and the switch to just barely sit tight. So whenever you engage the brake, the plunger will come out of the brake switch and turn on your brake lights. So now that it's resting, we have our spot. We're gonna go ahead and secure our brake switch mount. Now that we have our bracket attached, you wanna recheck and make sure that your plunger is not engaged. Okay, it's good and free resting here. As Soon as I hit the brake, you'll see that the plunger comes out of the brake switch. You'll also notice that our switch mount does not sit higher than our brake panel. You can now attach the brake switch to your harness. Make sure the harness is not obstructing any moving parts. You're gonna simply plug in the male bullet connector to the female bullet connector of the switch and the female to the male. The black wire is not used. We're gonna secure this with a zip tie. To install your converter, whether you have an electric cart or a gas cart like this one, these steps are exactly the same. First thing you're gonna do on a battery pack is find your main negative and main positive terminals. You're gonna hook up the red lead to the positive, black lead to the negative. On a gas cart, same thing applies here. Red positive, black negative. You wanna do this before you attach this part to the converter. Now we're gonna attach our converter to a flat metal surface. On this gas cart here, we're gonna use the rear upright of the frame. We're gonna use self-tapping screws and secure it. Now we're gonna attach the red and black that we hooked up to our battery to the red and black of the converter. And then you're gonna take the yellow and black wire with the two pin and attach that to the two pin that came off of your harness. Now when you plug this in, you will notice a small arc that's perfectly normal. Now using the supplied zip ties, we're gonna secure all the loose wires under the cart and the battery pack and at the front and rear of the cart. Now that we have power to our harness, you're gonna move back into the brake panel. We're gonna check our brake lights to make sure that the plunger is working at the proper tension. So if you press the brake in, you should see that the brake lights come on. You may have to either loosen or tighten the tension on the brake switch to get the plunger working properly. We're good here, so we're gonna go ahead and reattach our brake cover and install our floor mat. You're now finished installing your Mad Jack's Ultimate Plus Light Kit designed for the Yamaha Drive.